This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, we go looking for the perfect real Christmas tree, and here's some great stories from a man who's been selling them for years. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for watching FYI, your place for 24 hours of your community news and information. I'm Ken Cara, and here's your local headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A police officer and a motorcyclist have been cited in connection with a crash earlier this month. It happened December 2nd at the intersection of 19th and Locust Streets in Hazleton. Two Hazleton police cars were involved in a pursuit at the time. The vehicle cleared the intersection while the second hit the back tire of a motorcycle. State police investigated. According to our media partner, the standard speaker, Officer Brett Green was cited for a stop sign violation, while the motorcyclist, 28-year-old Luis J. Espinal of Hazleton, was cited for driving with a suspended or revoked license. Well, are you looking for the perfect Christmas tree? Mark Maylaff from Maylaff's Farm and Orchard in Sugarloaf Township operates a very popular Christmas tree stand on Route 93. I stopped by for a lesson in everything green for Christmas. It's so exciting because people come for their Christmas tree and you get to actually be a part of their experience. Not only, you know, you get to be a part of it. It's, it's such an organic experience. It's the best way to say it because you get to really be a part of, of something that they're gonna take home put in the center of their living room and their family's going to gather around it and uh, you get to be a part of that when you help them pick it out and and uh, I mean you run it through the bailer and you are and it's really a lot of fun and exciting times I mean you see kids and they're all excited to get their Christmas tree it's just a lot of fun. How's the Maylaff family go about getting their tree is there, is there a process with that or you guys always get a nice one every year I'm sure? Well we all uh, we all go out and uh, we pick one out of the field that we uh, we're, we're all excited about and uh, you know I mean years ago um, I'm stuttering around because that's a that's an interesting question. <laughs> but um, ev everybody has their own preference in our family. Um, we, our family, we've grown to like the Fraser fir. It's uh, really a slender. It could be a slender or fat tree. It just has a blue green needle like the traditional blue spruce. You know, in this area, we all grew up on the blue spruce tree, which is that heavy branch yeah. tree with hold heavy ornaments. Those or ornaments that get passed down from generation <laughs> to generation. And now it's your turn to hang it on your tree. And so uh, we used to use the blue spruce tree a lot. That used to be a favorite. But we've grown more favorable to the Fraser fir because of its just beauty. It's, it resembles the, the blue spruce, but it's not prickly. And it's really a fun tree to, to decorate your home with. I read somewhere it takes, I forget how many years for these trees to get up. I mean, what's the process? I mean, how long does it really take for a Christmas tree to become a good Christmas tree? Uh, at least 10 years. 10 years, okay. Yeah, at least 10 years. <laughs> Um, and do people, when they're coming in now, do people still wait until pretty late in the season to come get their tree, hold like an old tradition? I heard they used to wait until like almost Christmas Eve. Sometimes. Yeah, a lot of families, uh, whether they're busy, overly top busy. I think nowadays families are just running in circles. And uh, there's a lot of Larry come latelys and, and traditionally I'm one of those myself. <laughs> um, but um, the people are just really busy. It's hard getting there, getting caught up. Basically, you know, they're up, they're working, they're they're uh, Christmas shopping, and so uh, I mean, we'll be here till Christmas Eve with for, with Christmas trees available for people that wait that long to get them, and and we'll have them here for them. You guys have a big selection still. Sometimes you'll see in the shows like it's funny you get you get a stick if you wait to the last moment. You'll be stocked. Yeah, we'll still have trees available. You know, your best selection is early in the season, but the closer you get to Christmas, the selection does dwindle without a doubt. But uh, typically, we always still have Christmas trees available. For people that uh, are looking for them and and there are still a lot of families that uh, do like you said put it up on Christmas Eve and uh, decorate it and um, when the kids wake up the Christmas tree is up I mean everybody has a di little different tradition but it's it's a lot of fun when they come to the stand and talking to them about what their tradition is been doing this for years do you have a favorite story that sticks out with a family coming here or something that happened I, I absolutely do have a favorite <laughs> story and you know it's so funny because I was just with the woman the other night and we were talking about it and laughing and uh, she came and she picked out a beautiful tree. She says, Mark, she said, it's always been my tradition to get a blue spruce tree. And uh, she picked one out. Ken, it was beautiful. It was probably the girth of the tree, <laughs> which, is, which is how wide the branches are at the bottom, were probably eight feet wide. The tree was beautiful, perfect, all the way to the bottom to the top. And um, I managed to get it in the pickup. She asked me if I could deliver it. She lived real close. I, I delivered it to her. 
I dropped it off at her back door, and then I seen her uh, a few months later when we were selling produce, and I asked her how her tree worked out, and she said, Mark, I'm going to tell you the truth. She said, the tree was so beautiful. She said, we never got it in the house because it was too big. She said, we, we left it on the patio and decorated it. She said, but I'm going to tell you, she says, I'll never forget it. It was a great experience. I had a blast doing that story. Well, Maylaf's tree stand is open weekdays from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. and weekends from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. They will begin selling seafood on the 19th, and that stand is across from Gold Sure Save in the Valley. You're invited to have breakfast with Santa this Saturday from 9 a.m. until noon at Edgewood by Sand Springs in Drums. Yesterday we told you the breakfast was a benefit for Brandon's Forever Home. While Edgewood by Sand Springs did recently support the organization, Saturday's breakfast is not a fundraiser. But hey, go see Santa. Don't forget to bring your camera for photos with Santa. Reservations are required. Call 570-788-1101, extension 3. Well, brace yourselves for more local information. After this break, we have an important segment with our local American Red Cross chapter. And in sports, it's Dave Day. And this week, the Standard Speaker Sports Editor will talk about local basketball, wrestling, and Joe Madden's homecoming. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hey folks, welcome to this week's Wild About Hunting segment and welcome back to the Wild About Hunting office. This week I want to do a little product review for you of a product that we found to help you when you're checking your trail cameras. We found this first through social media. It's called Bone View, and it helps you read your trail cameras by using your smartphone. And here's how it works. Uh, like I said, David found this on an ad on Facebook and introduced a team to it. Uh, team member Jimmy Sharp bought one. He has it for the iPhone. I recently just purchased it for the Android. Real simple to use. Um, what I like about this product is it allows you to not only view the trail camera photos right on your smartphone, you can save them to your phone, you can delete them while you're there and put your camera card back into your camera clean without any photos on it. You can share them with friends by texting, family, friends, your hunting buddies, say, hey, we got this buck over here, or up to social media if, some, if that's something that you like to do. The other thing I like about this is it's really simple that if you're going out to hunt that evening and you've got a couple cameras set up and you want to check those cameras before you decide what stand location to hunt, this is a really lightweight tool that you can take with you, check the cameras, maybe see where deer are moving more and pick that stand to hunt in for that evening or that morning's hunt. But it's real simple. This is what it looks like for the Android. Uh, it's a real simple lightweight device. All you'll do is you'll take your camera card out of your trail camera, plug it into the SD card port there, and then it goes right in with the micro USB right into where you charge your phone. And then once it's in there, you, uh, you plug it in and you can read your card. You'll see all the cameras, all the pictures on there. It comes with instructions. You will have to download an app which is free on the uh, Google Play Store, on the Google uh, App Store, which is File Manager, File Transfer. And if you want to be able to watch video, you need to download MX Player. But they're both free. They work really well. We've tried them both over the weekend. Um, this whole little package with shipping was $30 and well worth the money. So if you want to give a Bone View a try, instead of carrying a big laptop, an iPad, or a bigger SD card reader into the field with you, Pack this in your pocket. You can get a waterproof case right on their website, boneview.com, a lot of with a lot along with a lot of other great products that they offer. And uh, give it a try. Send us an email at info at wildbouthunting.com. Let us know how you like Boneview when you're out there checking your trail cameras. We like it. It's Wild Bow Hunting approved here. So give it a try, and we'll see you next week somewhere in the hunting woods. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. 
Winter is one week away, but look at this beautiful scene at Maylaf's tree stand in Sugarloaf. It makes me want to drink hot cocoa and buy four trees. Here's our local weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Very cold for the next few days. Scattered flurries tonight before 11 p.m. It's going to be 12 for the low, but with the wind chill, it will feel like negative three and wind gusts will be as high as 36 miles per hour. Tomorrow, scattered flurries before 9 a.m. Partly sunny high of only 16 with the wind chill. It will feel like negative four degrees. The wind as high as 38 miles per hour, new snow accumulation of less than a half inch possible. Cold temperatures mean a hazardous weather outlook Thursday into Friday. Thursday night scattered flurries, mostly cloudy, low of 5 degrees. It will feel like negative 10. Wind gusts as high as 37 miles per hour. Friday will be mostly sunny. We'll get up to only 17 degrees and then at night 60% chance of snow showers before 1 a.m. and then snow likely after that. Our low is 13. On Saturday, snow before 1 p.m. then freezing rain and sleet high of 34. Saturday night 50% chance of rain cloudy with a low of 32. Sunday we will see rain showers likely before 1 p.m. Then a chance of rain and snow cloudy high of 43 and then Sunday night mostly cloudy low of 16 degrees. Well, if you are looking for a special gift this holiday season, why not give something that means something? And that is the annual tradition of the American Red Cross. Here to explain what that means and how you can help is Dave Skutnik. He is the regional communications manager for the American Red Cross. This is a wonderful campaign, an annual event that uh, helps those in need, and it's a great gift idea for people as well. Absolutely. It's uh, something we kick off right around Thanksgiving. It runs through the end of the year. Uh, number one thing, any donation to the American Red Cross is tax deductible. So, hey, tax year is almost over. So if you're looking to make that contribution, uh, that way you can. Uh, what part of what gives something that means something is doing what the Red Cross does. We help families in their time of that desperate need. So when that house fire hits in the middle of the night, the staff and the volunteers of the Red Cross are there to help that family. And we provide them with financial assistance right there on the spot. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is the American Red Cross 100% relies on public donations. We do not get one penny of government funding at all. We are not a government agency, so we rely on the generosity of the people here in the Hazleton area to help the people here in the Hazleton area when they need it. Wow, that's amazing, and so many people do come through each and every year. Now, there is a tree that is up in the Laurel Mall. Our good friends at the Laurel Mall, Rocco Russo, had told me about it. You told me about it. So tell us about this tree and the significance and how people can uh, take advantage of it. It's called our Give With Meaning tree, and uh, whether you get a letter in the mail from us, which you probably w would have gotten in the last uh, week to 10 days or so, or if you just stop by the mall, and who's not going to be at the mall at some point in the next uh, little while here with Christmas right around the corner, uh, right there at our Give With Meaning tree, uh, you can fill out a piece of paper, take an envelope, and you can... Uh, sponsor an ornament on that tree, either in memory of a loved one or in honor of someone you know. So uh, you can make that donation and then we'll place that ornament on the tree in memory of or in honor of a family, a friend, or a loved one. And then what is the money that is collected for those ornaments, where does that go? That goes to help those families uh, right here in the area. So if someone does experience a disaster and needs that immediate assistance, whether it's at 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, your contribution goes to help that family to get them a place to stay, to get them some clothes, and to get them that warm meal that they're not going to be able to make on their own because they just lost everything they have. And for someone maybe who, who just didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of the tree, there are other ways to give as well. So tell us, remind us about those. There sure are. A couple of ways you can give. You can give us a call at 1-800-RED-CROSS. Or if you want to speak to one of our uh, local Hazleton office folks, they'll be more than happy to help you as well. That number is 570-455-9517. You can go right on the web at redcross.org, make a contribution there for the holiday season. Or you can text the word Red Cross, all one word, to 90999, and that'll donate $10 right off your cell phone bill, and that will go, believe me, just $10, you think, that's not going to make a difference. But if everyone that's watching right now just hits Red Cross to 90999, we can help hundreds of families in the year ahead. And that's just it. You need this money now so you can make sure that 2017, the Red Cross is ready and able to help. Absolutely, because especially here in wintertime, it's inevitable that next house fire is going to happen before we know it, and we'll be there no matter what. Well, 
We hope it doesn't happen anytime soon, but we do need your help. So please, a wonderful opportunity to give to someone, to make a contribution in honor or memory of someone, and you're helping out the American Red Cross who truly need your help, not only this holiday season, but all year long. Thank you, Lisa. Green screen now, your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. And pick two is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. 42, pick three, 232, pick four, 1977, and pick five, 19875. Dave Seaman is ready to go. He's in rare form today. A lot of sports information with the Standard Speaker Sports Editor when we come back. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Santa Claus can have his week next week. This week it's all about Joe Madden in Hazleton as Joe is coming to town. Dave Seaman is in town right now on FYI Standard Speaker Sports Editor. Dave, here's a look at the events we're going to put up on the screen for the Hazleton Integration Project. Hazleton One Community Center as Joe comes home to be with his family, also to raise some needed funds for the Hazleton Integration Project. They'll be breaking ground on a baseball-themed playground over at the Hazleton One Community Center. Friday night will be kind of a casino night with some celebrities, sports celebrities, and then on Saturday, Saturday, Joe Madden Day, I believe. Public welcome. That will be a big day, a big celebration, Hazleton, as we honor Joe Madden for winning the World Series. You brought up something very interesting. What question could possibly be asked by the local media that Joe hasn't heard already? I have one in my mind, Dave. Do you have one? Uh, how, how do you replace Dexter Fowler in center field? That, that's probably going to be number one as far as baseball. But locally, I, I think uh, Joe's done a fabulous job like reconnecting with Hazleton and, and connecting with Hazleton and making Hazleton part of the World Series triumph. And uh, I, I think Joe's going to enjoy the, the week, and I think Hazleton residents should enjoy it too because it's a, definitely a mon monumental occasion, and uh, let's celebrate Joe. Dave, I want to ask him about the office. He mentioned Michael Scott a few times. He mentioned it in a press conference even saying when someone asked him, you know, where do you get your management style? And he said Michael Scott from the office. So I want to bring bring that up with, with Joe. Always a good time. So get out there. Joe Madden Day, like you said, should be really proud here in the Hazleton area. Speaking of being proud, Hazleton area basketball fans, um, Hazleton area fans in general this winter, we mentioned it should be very proud of the teams. And it's very early. You covered the first boys basketball game. The team looked good. They beat a good Parkland team. And from what I read from your article, Dave, Coach Joseph seemed impressed that a lot of his players got into the act. They have a lot of good players. A lot of them played well in this game, it's, game it seems. And sharing is caring. They shared the ball a lot. Uh, that's that's going to be their MO this year because uh, uh, they do have a lot of quality players too. And it, it does seem like uh, one player doesn't care if another player scores. It's it's. It's always been the case with Coach Joseph teams, but this year more, more than ever because when you have five players in double figures in your first game, uh, a six knocking on the door, uh, other players coming off the bench, uh, you know, doing, playing their roles to the hilt, uh, it makes for a good team. Now, again, it was only the first game, but it was a, a good indicator of what might come be in store this year for the Hazel area basketball fans. And they can't rest and get all excited. There will be a big game against Scranton Prep on the road. You'll be covering that one as well. Uh, definitely, yeah. Scranton Prep returns four starters from a district championship team last year. Uh, last year, they played the Cougars here, beat the Cougars in overtime in one of the most thrilling games of the season. A uh, team that likes to pass the ball, move, cut. If you, if you like you know, pure basketball the way it should be played, up-tempo and uh, uh, a lot of excitement, uh, and the Cougars play that way as well. So uh, all hands on deck. It's going to be a great game. So check out the Standard Speaker on Thursday for Dave's article. And you'll also, going back a little bit, have a special insert on Joe Madden coming up. We're going to do a special World Series out of left field here on SSP TV the week of December 26. When should they look out for the Joe Madden feature? Uh, it should be in Thursday's edition. Uh, uh, we had some contributions from uh, Jay Rand from Chicago who uh, wrote for us during the World Series. So we're going to touch up those articles a little bit. And uh, a new article from uh, uh, Fran Libinati, a former principal educator in the Hazelton area, was so nice and gracious enough to uh, share his memories of Joe. And I, I think Fran speaks uh, on behalf of Hazelton residents, the, the pride that we have in Joe. I think that will be interesting in the standard speaker. Let's go back to basketball, Dave. Um, Shenandoah Valley, they returned Joel Santana. He was the standard speaker player of the year last year, MVP of the tip-off tournament they were in. They won that tournament. And you said against some impressive team. Yeah, uh, they beat some teams that were higher class classification, Shenandoah Valley is a, a two-way team. 
Uh, last year they lost in the single A final, but still made it to uh, the, the state quarterfinals on, on a nice run. They upset St. John Newman of Williamsport in the opening round. Uh, this year they beat, I believe, Wellsboro and Lewisburg in the, in the tournament. So uh, they're teams that are a higher classification too, so uh, that bodes well for Channel Valley basketball. And it should be fun in the Schuylkill League with the girls basketball. Dave, Shenandoah Valley, they won a tip-off tournament. Monoy, um, North Schuylkill is in the running. Marion girls look good off the bat. So some entertaining basketball down south. Uh, there's no doubt about it too. I mean, yeah, Minersville is the top ranked team in the state in uh, Class 2A. Uh, Mono Area returned some key players from last year's team. Marion is always uh, a threat to, to win, and uh, Lords Regional in single A was a team that beat Mono Area last year in the so-called Eastern Final. Uh, they returned four starters, and they beat Marion this year in their tournament. So Lords has some experience. Uh, it's it's Schuylkill, Re Schuylkill League basketball on the girls' side is always entertaining, like you said, and uh, uh, this year will be no exception. Also locally, Dave, a lot of wrestlers um, in the Schuylkill League had some success in um, opening tournaments. And Jimmy Hoffman from Hazleton area, state runner-up last year, won his first tournament of the season. So pretty much right where he left off. Yeah, that's definitely a, a step in the right direction for Jimmy. Jimmy uh, is... Uh He's not going to rest. Uh, he's going to like. He, he wants to make it one step further than he did last year, uh, winning the top hat tournament in Williamsport. Always one of the most prestigious tournaments around. Uh, it's a good start for him. Uh, I talked to Keith Maurer Saturday night, the coach of the Cougars, and he said there were some bright moments and not so bright moments too. And uh, he agreed with me that uh, well, that's where you want to start. You don't want to start picture perfect unless you're Jimmy Hoffman, but uh, you want to look for uh, ways to improve, and uh, that's a good starting point for the Cougars. And Dave, speaking with Jimmy after he finished second last year, you could tell he was so hungry for this season. Even then, he was ready to get to work because he seemed like he enjoyed it, but he really, really wants to win that state title and wants to make a big impact this year for the Cougars. All right, big week here in the Hazleton area. Read the standard speaker and watch FYI for your Joe Madden coverage. You made it to the middle of the work week. Reward yourself at Bottlenecks. It's their featured steak entree night with plenty of amazing steak options. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy anniversary to Janine and Mark Mazurkevich. Love from your family, friends, and everyone at SSP TV. Next announcement, happy ninth birthday to Riley Nehe. Love from Grammy, Aunt Fran, Aunt Linda, Uncle John, Uncle Jimmy, and the rest of your family. Tonight's Talk of the Town report, Holy Trinity Orthodox Church, 223 South Kennedy Drive in McAdoo, be having a Progy and Olishki sale Friday, December 16th from 10 a.m. to 5.30. Please call ahead to secure your order, 570-929-2179. And finally, the Walk-In Art Center, located in Schuylkill Haven, building a Muhammad Ali tribute exhibit opening January 12th. The show date will be Thursday, January 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. Admission is free, but donations are welcome, and light refreshments will be served. For info, just call 570-732-3728. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Robert L. Sendel of Whitehall, Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Gilbert Funeral Home. Dorothy Dot Visentainer of West Hazleton. No local services will be held. Arrangements are by the Turnbach Funeral Home. Ashley Ann Tamborski of Cunningham. Funeral is Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. David L. Price of Sugarloaf Township. Arrangements will be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. Donald Pence of Hazleton. Services will be private and John J. Rusnock Jr. of Whitehaven. Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. in the Good Shepherd Church. Friends may call at the church Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bond and Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is James Bosco of Lavelle. James, if you're watching, give us a call 570-455-7267, extension 104. We'll have Joe Madden coverage tomorrow on FYI, plus there's a new Star Wars movie coming out. So what a great Thursday. We'll see you then. Take it easy, everyone.